We now go to three octave scales using the finger pattern concept. Now, the important thing with the three octave scales that you catch from me is that we start with the two octave scale concept, and really the only thing that's new here is that we're shifting up on the E string to get that last octave. Now, the way I do the shifting is as I'm going up, I always do a one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four shift on the E string going up. So it's always one, two, one, two, one, two, until that last one, two, three, four. Coming down, however, my fingering is four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, two, one, all on the E string. So I do my whole shift up and my whole shift back on the E string. So let me do a couple of these for you so you get a feel. Let's start with one that starts on first finger on the G string. So uh, let's do a C major scale. Let's do a G major scale starting on open G. Our finger patterns are 2 3 on the G string, 2 3 on the D string, 1 2 on the A string, and 1 2 on the E string, followed by a series of 1 2 shifts. This concept holds true on the D string as well. With the open D string, if you look at the scale that's written out for you in the three octave worksheet, you'll see how that works. And the same with those that start on first finger on the D string. The important thing is here for every single scale that you begin with first finger or open on the G and the D, and that you use the same finger patterns for the first two octaves. The third octave then becomes your shifting passage and it should work for you. If you have any questions don't hesitate to see me and we'll work on this further.